Welcome to Climate Quickies, bite-sized nuggets of climate goodness from our TEDx London experts in under five minutes. In this week's Climate Curious, recorded live at TED, we're covering a new one, clouds, with Kelly Wanza. She's joining us to share what marine cloud brightening is, why we need to better understand the role of aerosols in our ecosystem, and how it can be used as an emergency treatment tool for heating our planet. Over to Kelly to explain more. Stay curious. So today we're joined by Kelly Wander, um, a TED speaker in 2019 and the founder and executive director of Silver Lining. Let's just jump right into it. Tell me a little bit about your work and kind of in the climate space. What are you focused on? Well, hi, Miriam. Thank you for having me here. Um, it's terrific, TED. Uh, so my organization, Silver Lining, and myself personally, we're focused on uh, what we call near-term climate risk. Right. So, okay, for, for people who haven't heard this before, because I, I really want to get into what kinds of interventions you're talking about and yeah. what you're talking about, but just because I feel like it's really important, this idea that even if we put in a, a, a because of the way that carbon acts in our atmosphere, if even when we put in the these, let's say, we do all the work to bend the curve, we may not see the effects immediately. Is that, is that part of what you're looking at in that period? That's exactly what we're looking at. And so the, in the United Nations reports on climate change, where you see those pathway curves, right. they're quite famous, they kind of look like the COVID curves. Yes. Right? And so you can see where actually the curves all kind of peak, all, all of them, all scenarios around 2050. Yeah. And so, you know, we're in 2024. So between now and 2050, things keep getting warmer in all those projections. And so then the question is, you know, that the fastest we can bend the curve right now is around 2050, 2060. If we want to bend it sooner, are there things we can do? Great. Tell us about what marine cloud brightening is and how it fits into this array of different kinds of initiatives that could be out there to help us in that near term. Well, so marine cloud brightening um, is based on, you know, the phenomenon that scientists have studied for a long time, that particles in the atmosphere, both directly and mixed with clouds, they bounce sunlight back to space. So what you see in like the haze in a foggy day, um, what you see in clouds when they're white and fluffy. Right. And what um, we've seen from pictures of Earth from space, if you've seen the bright streaks in the clouds over the ocean, that's created by pollution particles from ships. Wow. And so those particles are part of how nature keeps the planet, you know, like a shiny dot and reflects sunlight back to space and puts us in that Goldilocks zone. And so scientists think if you increase that reflection of sunlight from the atmosphere by just 1%, that you could offset uh, two degrees of warming or more. Right. And you could do that by putting particles, one way to do it, particles into clouds, and one way to do it, putting sea salt particles from the ocean into marine clouds like the ships do, only cleaner. Right. So this sounds like a really interesting initiative i'm sure though that you must come across like people who feel a bit uncomfortable with this idea right and tell me a bit about how we need to think about this like what are the shifts in mindsets what are the assumptions we're making that are maybe incorrect people feel all sorts of ways and i think i have a lot of empathy for that because you know we should have maybe in the 80s when scientists started saying this is a problem, you know, started dialing down our emissions. And, you know, had we done what we needed to, we wouldn't be where we are. And so if I'm a person who's worked in climate change for 30 years, I'm not. I started 15 years ago. Right. I, I'd, be, I, I, I'd be pretty upset that we let it get this far. And now people are proposing, you know, putting particles into clouds to go to climate when, you know, that doesn't seem to, to make a huge amount of sense on top of what we're already doing. That said, um, when we talk to people about this, you know, one of the really interesting things that's happening is that particles and pollution, like the particles from ships that I talked about, but all pollution is actually causing this effect already. Right. And it's partly offsetting the warming that we would otherwise have. And so when we talk to people about it, we try to say like, this isn't just a crazy new thing. Right. 
this is actually, we have this dirty, uncontrolled cooling going on. And because we're getting to be quite successful at cleaning up these particles, which are bad for breathing, we're cleaning up emissions, that we're going to lose that cooling. And one of the problems is that those particles, they cool temporarily while they're there. Right. And they stay in the atmosphere for a few days. So if you stop emitting those particles, a few days later, you lose that cooling. Greenhouse gases mix chemically in the atmosphere and stay for 100 years. Right. So we have this disconnect. And so, you know, going back to your question about what, what my organization does, if you look at um, brightening clouds or brightening the atmosphere, that question of what will happen in the near term when we bring down pollution and what might it look like to try to do marine cloud brightening, that's kind of the same research. Right. And those questions are tied together and really important. So with so many of these technologies, you see the fossil fuel industry using it as a potentially like for example when i think about like ca carbon dioxide removal technology mm -hmm. you see this as a way for the fossil fuel industry to see itself continuing be to be able to extract and pollute is there a f do your colleagues in this field do you find that people might have a fear around that that this allows people to think they can keep polluting because we'll just cool or is that does that not enter into this conversation very much I would say it's at the center of the conversation, oh, okay. <laughs> um, both the sort of general fear that it's a panacea. And so people say, oh, OK, if you can cool the planet some way, all of us can relax about this other much harder problem of right. transitioning away from fossil fuels. And then, you know, the direct question of fossil fuel companies and can they greenwash here? Can they mm -hmm. put right. together the pieces to not have Like to traditional tactics they've used in other yeah, areas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and they do it all across the climate portfolio yeah. with branding, with, you know, whatever. Um, it's what's, what is interesting in this case is that um, there may be some reasons why it actually works in the other direction okay. in this particular case. Um, and one is with regard to general society, where um, there were some researchers at Harvard who suggested that actually it sends like a disaster signal to people oh. where they go, wow, if scientists and governments are thinking about that, this must be really serious. How interesting. And in the past year, we had three UN reports and one U.S. government report all recommending research on brightening the atmosphere. Okay. That is a signal that we really need to get serious. <laughs> well, this is what I was wondering. Yeah. Is you said you've been doing this for 15 years. Have you found that over that time, people have become more and more receptive and this has become more and more something that people are thinking about? Yes, but not in a linear way. Okay. Like it's changed really quite dramatically in well, the past 12 to 18 months. Okay. And combination of what I mentioned before, where you have a, a official reports yes. of starting to have government research programs in the U.S. and the U.K. and Europe. But it also, you know, we have these record temperatures and record ocean heating. We have really dramatic climate impacts. We have really dramatic reports coming out of the Arctic, Antarctic. We have scientists afraid that the EMOC current is changing. All of that's in the past year. And so I think people are, you know, they're asking, okay, what else is what else is in the toolkit? Where's the pull the ripcord plan? Right, right. Um, and, and so that's changed, I think, attitudes a bit as well. That's brilliant. I mean, thank you so much for sharing this. It's such insight. I recommend everyone go and watch this Kelly's talk and listen to the conversation afterwards. Thank you so much for coming here. Thanks very much, Miriam. Thanks for listening to This Quickie. This episode was created by our superstar podcast team at TEDx London. Until next time, stay curious.